Hey folks, welcome back to Anish Learns to Code. Today I will answer frequently asked questions that I have received on many different platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, GitHub. People have even found my personal contact number and contacted me on WhatsApp. They have asked me many questions regarding my technical student internship at CERN. So I take this opportunity to make this video and I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Let's get started. So the first question that we have is, do I need to find a professor when applying at CERN? When you're applying at CERN as a technical student, you do not need to find a professor or a particular person at CERN before applying as a technical student. The application for a technical student at CERN can be found at careers.cern, which is their official careers webpage. Over here, there is a section for student opportunities. Under student opportunities, we can see that there is a technical student program. You can go and directly apply over here and you do not need to contact any professor or any other person at CERN before applying for this internship. The next question we, that we have is, what is CERN? Excellent, people have even asked me what is CERN. CERN is a very large scientific organization. It is the largest scientific experiment on Earth in Geneva, Switzerland. And they, uh, they are the creators of the World Wide Web. Tim Berners-Lee was working at CERN when he created the World Wide Web. And they have the Large Hadron Collider, which is the largest accel particle accelerator on Earth. And they are mainly performing physics research to understand the beginnings and the evolution of the universe. Question number three. Do they work on machine learning at CERN? CERN is a, a very large organization with thousands of people working at CERN. So CERN requires people from many different fields. You have engineers, you have technicians, you have staff, you have software developers. And yes, you even have people who are working, are using machine learning. Machine learning is just a technique. So yes, there are people at CERN who are using machine learning on their work. Uh, when I worked at CERN, I did not use any machine learning. In my current job, I'm not using any machine learning. But yes, if that is what you want to pursue, there are definitely opportunities f to perform to use machine learning at CERN, if that is what you would like. Question number four, what was your resume when you applied to CERN as a technical student? I will now show you my resume that I used when I applied to CERN as a technical student, and this resume should be an example of what not to do, because it's a terrible resume. This resume includes a photograph, which is something that should not be there. This resume uses many different fonts. So this resume uses, I think, four or five different fonts. That should not be there, because that is just overwhelming to the brain. There should ideally be no more than two fonts when you're using any document, not just resume. So the less number of fonts you have, the more cohesive uh, any document looks. This goes, this is not just for resume, this is like for every document that you make. So I'm using photographs, I'm using multiple different fonts. I have filled a lot of uh, things as, as under technical skill set and many, many, many different things which you should not be there. Your resume should be highly focused and I'm using many different colors. So this. I, this was my resume when I applied to CERN, but this is not a good example of resume. Now I will show you my current resume, which I think is an improvement from the resume that I used three years ago. This does not have my photograph. This has only two fonts that I'm uh, part of this resume. So a little, uh, it's, it doesn't assault your eyes. And yes, the color schemes are also a little more muted. Okay, moving on. What was your resume when you applied to CERN for a junior fellowship position? So the resume that I have over here is the resume that I used when I applied to CERN for my junior fellowship position. Uh, question number six, your letter of motivation when you apply to CERN for a technical student. Okay, the letter of motivation that I wrote, uh, the letter of motivation is I think one of the most important parts of your application and this is something that you must pay time to. to when I was filling out my CERN application, I think filling out my application took about seven to eight days and more than one day went on just the letter of motivation because I made several, several, several different drafts and that is uh, something that I highly recommend that you do. Go open a Word document or, or open one note like I have, like whatever uh, document pr program that you prefer and write several drafts so until and unless you can finalize. So a letter of motivation should not be very big. It doesn't have to be 2,000 words, 3,000 words. It has to be concise. Aim for 1,000 words or less. And uh, don't, don't, don't tell your entire history, like first uh, you were this, then this, and this. It, your letter of motivation should not be your resume. Your resume tells your history, like where did you go to school, where did you work. Your letter of motivation pro is an opportunity for you 
to provide more information about yourself. So if you just make a copy of your resume, like this is this is this something that you have done, which is already being told by your resume, you're giving limited information to the recruiter. So your use your letter of motivation to provide extra information and tell something about yourself, like what motivates you, why do you want to work at CERN, or like why do you want to work, why do you prefer software development, or why do you prefer physics, or whatever domain you are applying to. So use that as an opportunity to provide more information. Moving on, question number eight. Who were the people who gave you letter of recommendations? Uh, no, 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 I think I skipped question number seven. How many letter of recommendations did you have when you applied to CERN as a technical student? When I applied to CERN as a technical student, I provided three letter of recommendations. Two from my university professors and one from a previous workplace. So I had previously interned at a coding institute in Delhi and I asked my mentor, my teacher sort of in that coding institute to provide me a letter of recommendation. So in total, I had three letter of recommendations when I applied as a technical student. Who were the people who gave you your letter of recommendations? Professors? Yes, two professors and one past workplace. What were the dates when you applied to technical student at CERN? So this is a question that I receive a lot, like what were the different dates? Like when did you apply? When did you get selected, etc.? So I have compiled all the important dates over here. My application was completed on the 9th of February, 2018. I received the email to appear for Sondru interview. So Sondru is like an online platform, which is a, a video recording uh, interview platform. So they have questions like flashcards flashing on the screen. And for every question you have 20 seconds, uh, not 20, like 120 seconds, 180 seconds. And you have to answer that question. And a video of you answering that question will be recorded. And your pros prospective uh, interviewers, recruiters can view those videos then. Then I received an interview email from my first uh, department on the 16th of May, 2018. I was not selected by this interview. Uh, I also received another email uh, on the 14th of June, 2018. This was by a second department and I was selected. So I was selected as a technical student. I received my selection mail on the 18th of June, 2018. I started my CERN contract on the 1st of September, 2019. Oh my God, yeah. And my contract was supposed to end on the 31st of August. To, oh, I started my contract in 2018, and my contract was supposed to end on the 31st of August, 2019. It was a 12 month contract, but then I received a two month extension. So a technical student contract can be maximum 14 months. So I received a two month extension from 1st of September, 2019 to 31st October, 2019. After 14 months, I returned back to India to finish my bachelor's degree. Okay, the technical student program has a minimum four months to maximum 14 months. I can't take a year long break from my university. What duration should I fill in? So this is something that people often ask me because uh, normally in every university, summer vacations are three months. They're like June, July, August, approximately three months of summer vacations. So an internship, which is one year long is very confusing and very new for people. It was for me also. When I first read that uh, an organization is offering an internship for one year. Even I wasn't sure, like, if I am selected, how will I take a one year? Uh, like, how will I leave university for one year? So, what many people do in this case is that they pursue their internship and their university at the same time. So, they discuss with their university that they will not physically attend every classroom and they will work at CERN, but for every exam. So, like, whatever mid semester or end semester examination that you have, they will fly back to their home university, wherever that is, they will give their examinations and then come back to CERN. So you have some vacation days at CERN. So what people do is they use their vacation days, go home, give their exams and come back. So this is something that many people do. If you get selected, you can sit down, talk to your university, like tell them, look, it's CERN. It's a very big deal. You please allow me to go and I will give, submit all my assignments, give all my exams on time and it will not be a problem. I did not do this because I, I did talk to my university that I will fly back, give all my exams and then fly back to CERN and do my work. I will manage both simultaneously. This is something that the, my university did not allow me. But I, have, I know many people, many friends whose universities did allow them. What my university said that you have to leave university, you have to take a break. And personally, I did not mind leaving university because then it was a little uh, less stressful because I did not have to study and work at the same time. So I did not mind that as well. So what I did, I, I had completed two years of my university, then I took a one year break. I worked at CERN, 
then I came back and then I resumed university. So my four year course eventually turned into a five year course. So whichever path you take, they're both fine, like whatever suits you. And if you get selected at CERN, I think your university will understand. And every university has legally laws that uh, whether it's a four year degree or three year degree, a student has to finish it in either five years or six years or some other conditions. So you're, you, you will get extra time if you are selected. Another recommendation that I would make is when you're filling out the form that you do fill out for 12 months or 10 months because the longer duration that you have, the more you will enjoy your experience, the more you will get to learn when you go there because I think it is this experience is better, it is more enjoyable if you go for a longer duration. And if you do fill in a longer duration on your application form, I think it's also preferred by CERN because when I was selected, every other student that I saw at CERN did intern did their internship for 12 months or 14 months i never met anyone personally when i was at cern who was just an intern for four months so i think that even they prefer if somebody is willing to come to cern for a longer duration question number 11 it's in which department did you work at cern i was selected by the fap fap or finance and administrative processes department so inside this department they have an organic unit called bc which is business computing and I was a full stack software developer in FAP PC. There you go. Okay, what did I work on when I was there as a technical student? Mm -hmm. So I was a full stack software developer. So they had several different applications. The main application that I worked on was EDH. So EDH is like electronic document handling system. This is a very large application that, that is older than me. I, when I was working at CERN, I was 20 years old. I think this application was like 22, 23 years old. So this application is actually older than me. And uh, CERN does not use fax machines. So they're not filling out documents by hand. They're not wasting paper. So every document that CERN has is being electronically handled by EDH, Electronic Document Handling System. And I, along with other people, I was part of a team, was responsible for maintaining this software, this uh, EDH. So that, is, that was my main task at CERN. And I was working on a Java stack. So databases are obviously Oracle SQL. And we had Java, Java Spring, Java Hibernate, etc. What is a stipend? Oh no, I skipped a question. Do we get paid leaves? If yes, then how many? At CERN, we get 2.5 paid leaves per month. So 2.5 times 12, that's 30. You get 30 paid leaves in an entire year. This is very good. So you have 30 paid leaves, plus you have seven sick days. And along with that, you even have holidays, for example, Christmas break and other Swiss and friends holidays. And there are approximately 15, 20 holidays. So all in all, you have 30 plus seven plus 20 vacations in one year at CERN, which in my opinion is amazing. So yeah, you do get paid leaves at CERN and you can use this opportunity to explore Europe, explore Switzerland, to go back to your home university to give your examinations, whatever you prefer. Question number 14. What is the stipend of a technical student at CERN? So the stipend we can check from the official website, technical student program. Uh, the stipend is approximately 3,100 Swiss francs. And uh, technical student, why don't they have it written? Um, IT, mathematics, and robotics, OK. So we can see additional information. OK, an allowance of 3,300. They have increased the stipend. So when I was there, I was getting around 3,000 Swiss francs. So now it's 3,300. Excellent. They have increased the stipend. So yeah. And yeah, moving on. Is the stipend that CERN pays enough to live in Switzerland? In my opinion, the stipend is pretty good. And you can easily live in Switzerland or France. So CERN uh, is on the border. Half of it is in France and half of it is in Switzerland. And there are two sites, two CERN sites. There's one is Mira in Switzerland and one is in Prevesan, which is in France. So irrespective of which side you get a job in, in Prevesan or Mira, you can choose where you wish to live, whether you wish to live in Switzerland or France. So France is rural countryside and Switzerland, Geneva is a proper city. So Switzerland is more expensive. Switzerland is one of the most expensive places on planet Earth. And as Geneva is a city, it is definitely more expensive than f rural France. So many people live in France. I lived in France for 12 months of, so for one year of my contract, because it was cheaper than living in Switzerland. 
But even if you live in Switzerland, your stipend does allow you that you can, or you won't have a very luxurious life. You're not going to be rolling in money, but you will have a decent lifestyle. You'll have a decent apartment. You'll be able to buy groceries, buy food. You won't, you won't eat re- uh, every day from a Swiss restaurant. But yeah, once in a week, you can go to restaurants and you can even explore Europe a little bit. So when I was over there in Switzerland, uh, just from on the basis of my stipend, I was living in a very de- very good apartment actually, and I ha- and I travelled a lot. So I went to Paris, I went to Vienna, I went to many 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 different places. So and I also saved up money. It's not like I burned through all the money that CERN gave me. So yeah, I think that the stipend that CERN is giving is very decent. You can easily uh, you have to manage a little, you have to calculate a little in your head, but you you can easily survive and even thrive on on the basis of that stipend. So normally what people do is they spend about 800 to 1,000 Swiss francs per month on their rent, apartmental rent. So from 3,000, 1,000 Swiss francs goes away. So now you have 2,000 left. From On this 2,000 Swiss francs, you have to spend on food, on groceries, on travel cards so that you can take buses and take trains and travel around. And after this, you can easily save 1,500, 1,400 Swiss francs per month, which you can use for pleasure, leisure activities. Okay. Moving on, do we have to pay tax on the stipend we receive from CERN? The stipend or salary that you're getting from CERN is absolutely tax-free because CERN is an international organization like the United Nations. You do not have to pay any tax on your salary, which is a very good thing. So whatever you're getting, it's all yours. Question number 70, where did you live when you were working at CERN? All right, so initially when I arrived at CERN uh, for five months, so this is CERN. I have opened Google Maps over here. If, if you can see this triangular region, this triangular region, this triangular region is CERN. And this is the Mira side. And if you see there's this line going through the middle, this line is the border. So on one side, you can see we have France. And on the other side, it's Schweiz. So this Schweiz is Switzerland. So on one side, on the right hand side, it's Switzerland. And on this left hand side, it's France. So half of it is in France and a big chunk of it is in Switzerland. This is the Mira side. So initially, for the first five months, I was living in Ferny Voltaire. So Ferny Voltaire is this town. It's, you can see it's not very close to CERN, but it's pretty close. It's like six, seven kilometers. And I used to cycle all the way from Ferny Voltaire to CERN for like five, six months. And it's called Voltaire, if you know, is like a French, uh, famous French freedom fighter, like a revolutionary during the French Revolution. And this uh, place is named after him because he lived there like towards the end of his life. And after five months, I shifted over here. This is saint genis Puy. Ferny Voltaire is in France, and saint genis Puy is also in France. So I, I, I was not living in Switzerland. I was living in France. And saint genis Puy is much, much more closer to CERN. You can see that the distance is very less. And there's also a direct bus going from saint genis to CERN. So initially, for the first five months, I was bicycling from Ferny Voltaire to CERN. But now I started taking the bus. And I was here for seven, eight months. For the last two months of my contract, so after 12 months, I shifted to Geneva. So for the last two months, I was living over here. Um, yeah, around the lake region. So this was also really nice because it's Switzerland. You have a very nice view of the lake. Uh, I, it, it also had very good access to public transport. It was also very close to the railway station. So there were definite advantages of living in Switzerland. Uh, there were advantages of living in France as well. It was, France was cheaper. And France was like more quiet, more countryside. So yeah, they both have advantages, disadvantages. So that's it. That's all the questions uh, that we have for today. So thank you very much for joining, guys. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. See you in the next one. Ciao.